of all the famous images preserved in our national archives. The most requested photo of all time is this one. You remember when you talked about finding an ally for Nixon? Someone from the outside. I need to get this letter to the president. You'll never guess in a million years who just showed up at the Northwest Gate asking to see him. It's Elvis. Elvis Presley. You swear this isn't a joke, because his penmanship is horrible. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you think we should meet with him? Yes, Mr. President. During my nap hour. Everybody loves Elvis. Call me. He could really help us with the youth folk. He would also like a badge. A what? I would like to go undercover as a federal agent. I've been in 31 major motion pictures. That makes me an expert in costume and disguise. I could infiltrate the communists, and then I'd bust them all. Let's do this thing. An undercover rock and roller. Sounds ludicrous. I can supply my own firearm. So, yeah, I forget the documentary already that I'm supposed to see, but it's it's like the only wild card I've got in my schedule. Like, everything else is p- carefully planned and curated to, to, to the end degree. spontaneous moment. Yeah, and I just had this block of time, so I started going through all the P&I screening schedule and just seeing if there was something that happened to fit that I might be interested in seeing, and this one called The Return. Oh, oh which is about prisoners uh, well, from the three. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hold it a little, the mic right up there to you, closer oh, okay. to your, because it'll sound so much nicer. Liza Johnson. Speaking of, re- yeah, the same <laughs> film. I just, just put it together. No wonder you were kind of like taken aback. Uh, yours is called re- the, re- the Return also. Mine's just called Just Return, return right? Yeah. I was yeah. at the, like, at a, I was at a, at a premiere of that or a sc- pre-screening or something, I remember, because, uh, well, yeah, and they had the cast there. I'm almost positive. Maybe at MoMA? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was there. Um, yeah, that was uh, Linda Cardellini couldn't come because right. she was giving birth like at that moment. Oh, that's but, what it was. Uh, but I Mike was there and yes, some of the other that's cast what members. Yeah. I just remember him looking down. You know, this is I know that from anecdotally that he's just a very you know he gets very intense. So, but he was looking down for most of it, like at his feet, like he just was. I don't know. You don't remember that? I don't. I don't. I remember him being there and stuff and. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the thing that I remember is that I forgot to introduce the DP, and he oh. reminded me. So he must oh, have been present, okay. very present, mm. because he he was like, "Girl, you got to get your game together," you know. Yes, so. and hate ship, love ship, which is uh, your was your sophomore film. Yes, and which yeah. uh, also uh, your editor was Michael Taylor, who's our yes, mutual and he, friend. He also uh, was an editor in this film. Too, That's right. So, yeah. Yes, it was a spectacular job all around. It was really a, a nice um, experience watching the film when I saw it a few weeks ago because um, uh, it was fun. It was fun for movie to see. And it's, 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 it's not that common to see something both smart and fun. Oh, what a sweet thing to say. Thank well, you. Well, it's just, it's true. Mm-hmm. Two great performances from Kevin Spacey and, uh, and uh, Michael Shannon. And Michael plays, of course, Nixon. I'm kidding. He plays, <laughs> a, that would have been interesting if you changed around. I don't know if it would have worked quite as well, but. You know what's funny? I did. Um, I went to see Mike in uh, Long Day's Journey into Night mm-hmm. on Saturday, and he told me that that Kevin has also played the role, the Jamie role in that show. And oh, right. So I think I saw that for him. I, so I I was just thinking about the ways that I I there I think they're of course they're both so specific and yes. so um both so wonderful in their own specific ways but they have both played that role before right if not if not uh, um, elvis yeah. at least uh, they played uh, uh, the the car- character of gene was it is i think it's jamie is jamie it? excuse me in, lo- jamie? in in the eugene o'neill play mm-hmm. i saw that version on broadway actually it's the really one, yeah i was i was at it was an incredible cast too yeah you know? it was it was great on set you saw the one now or the one no the one the one back 30 the years one that ago. kevin did yeah amazing yeah. Well, the one that I saw was also really great. I, I was, know. I was really, I was... really impressed by them. Yeah. 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 Well, to get back to Elvis and Nixon, how did you come down to casting, let's say, Michael? Because Kevin is a, I don't know if you call him an impressionist, but he can do great impersonations and characters. It's among like, his skills. It's, I mean, it's I right. Think, yes. I think he has the full kit of Oh, sure. Oh, well, we, so we know that now. Think, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows yeah. that. But, um, but, 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 but Michael but, but is he, not doing an impression. Can, but like, of, of, like uh, Kevin does do sometimes like the late night talk show, Rich Little mimicry stuff. And he's right. so good at it. And, he is. and I've occasionally had the privilege of, you know, being the personal audience of say oh, his Bill sure. Clinton or something, you yeah. know, or his Jack yes. Lemon or, you know, sure. like it's, it's really a wonderful quality. Um, I, uh, 
but really for both of them we 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 wanted to take that to a different place you mm-hmm. know where particularly both of those icons nixon and elvis mm-hmm. have both been widely imitated mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. mimics and imitators mm-hmm. you know and so i think that maybe even especially with elvis the the times that you see him represented by a performer they are mostly focused on the surfaces of Elvis, you know, and so is the whole world. Like that, that's, you know what I mean? Like his iconic surfaces are so familiar and so popular yeah. in this way. That's just really deeply saturating the earth, you know, globally. Yes, and, right. And, and I think that, you know, most serious actors that I know, they take the physical work very seriously, whether it's a known historical mm-hmm. character or not. Do you mm-hmm. know, like, like people who are serious actors, they really think about like, what is the voice of this character? How does this character walk? You know, how does this character move? Mm-hmm. And, and so of course, Kevin and Michael both worked on that when they were preparing their characters, sure. you know, and they were thinking like, like with Kevin, we looked at some films and we were like, okay, like how does, how does Nixon like hunch and lurch? And he really studied his voice and, and, you know, Mike did the same thing and really looked at the the physical work and the voice and those kinds of traits. And that's part of acting. Right. And that, that is also, I think part of being a good mimic. For, and, and that's, I think that's a, you know, a cool tradition. Like I love Rich Little and mm-hmm. I like, I think that the tradition of Elvis imitating is very interesting and like, that's all well and good. But I think that what's really different about what both Michael and Kevin are doing here is that they also are thinking about the character right. and, and like how does the character arc out in this story? Sure, sure. You know, yeah, they're and, going and, for and character more than caricature, and and yeah. and and not as a skin level or flesh level portrait of the character, but more of what's under, what's in the fiber of the, those characters, and what are their motivations, and what are they going through at this particular time in their lives? Totally, and you know? and Mike, Mike really. Um, like he went to Graceland with Jerry Schilling. Um, he went to Memphis, actually, not only to Graceland. And they did stuff like go to Graceland after hours and go to the Lauderdale courts where Elvis grew up. And, mm-hmm. you know, I think it really meant a lot to him to look out that window that was Elvis's bedroom and, and like think about what is it like to be a kid in here and look out and that's what you see, do you know? And like, like really a kind of to try to bring a historical depth to who Elvis had been. And then also to really try to think moment by moment what might Elvis want or what might Elvis feel throughout this journey. And and that to me is actually kind of unusual in the broader scope of how we think about Elvis or what we know about Elvis. You know, I think when someone is that famous, most of the time people think about like, what do I want from him? You know, can I get a lock of hair? Can I get an autograph? Can I get some access to the sort of channel Mm -hmm. to divinity that celebrity is is supposed to provide, you know, right, right, right. right, But it's actually kind of rare to take that much time to think about like, well, what does Elvis want? Right. You know? Yeah. And, and I think for, for both, um, and, and also for the Nixon character, do you know, there's a lot that we know about Nixon. There's also wonderful existing representations of Nixon. Um, some more relevant than others for this project you know like i i think that the super paranoid oliver stone nixon is very interesting but that's not the nixon of this movie you know or things that we know historically about nixon's policies have you know been very profound on our own times and Mm -hmm. and i don't i'm not a huge fan of all of them but some of the things that we know about his sort of downfall and his um decision making just aren't that important in this story do you know what i mean like sure. i'm not a huge fan of like his decisions in cambodia or COINTELPRO pro or you know watergate like but like in this story the thing that i thought was so kind of charming is that he doesn't even understand why he should meet elvis mm-hmm. you know and that's kind of the nixon of this movie and i i was really I thought Kevin was so thoughtful about how did he try to think about, like, where is Nixon right at this moment in his career? You know, what is he planning that he's being secretive about? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and really, right. and to me, those kinds of questions that Mike and Kevin are asking, those are the actorly questions, you know, and that's, to me, that's what makes the difference between an imitation and a, uh, an actorly role is like, how do you, how do you take the traits and then place them in a, 
story that's deeply embedded in character and that also reacts against the other person in a, a plotted, you know, responsive situation. The film, I'm sure I'll touch on this in my intro, uh, but the film takes place on the day uh, in 1970, was it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where, where uh, you know, Elvis uh, visits Richard Nixon in the, in the Oval Office. Uh, his goal is to get a, a badge, right? Is it a, mm -hmm. ba a badge mm -hmm. to be a, um, um, what was the exact badge? The, the, At the time, the, the, that department was called the Bureau of Narcotics Narcot and Dangerous Drugs. Right. And I... I I think that that has now changed more into um, mm -hmm. uh, alcohol and firearms, oh, oh. like whatever is that department, and, right. and maybe it has some relationship. Oh, I see now this is where no, my governmental okay. knowledge is limited, but, right. it, but there's also Homeland it. Security and right. stuff that didn't exist at that time. Right. But at the time, it was called the Bureau of Narcotics but, and, and he wanted drug. to be a, an honorary, not an honorary, he, he wouldn't even, even probably use that term honorary, right? He wanted to be a deputy. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, he actually deputized. wanted to be an undercover agent. Agent, right? Yeah. Undercover agent, which is the, the kind of the in joke, the joke of the mm -hmm. uh, idea that he could go undercover, the most recognizable celebrity on the planet, right? So, have you ever been in the White House? Have you ever visited the White House? I think I've been to the Rose Garden, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I've ever been inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was all replicated, obviously, on a on the house cart set or something like that. Uh, <laughs> we actually had our own. We had our own. Um, <laughs> Did you? Do you know what was great is that I had. I, I was not up to date on House of Cards, so I had only seen episodes where right. You're Frank, busy. Frank You've been Underwood. Busy. Well, he just wasn't president <laughs> yet on the ones that I had seen. Yes, and I was so grateful for that because oh, I see. because later I've seen some of the ones where he is yes. president, and and it it unnerved me to sure. see the same actor in the same room. Of course, and it was so great that I was behind on it because you know I felt like I knew a lot about Kevin's work, but I didn't. I wasn't fighting like trying to differentiate how we shot that scene from House of Cards because I just hadn't seen him in that room yet, right. you know? Yeah. So that was like, whew. Right. Yeah. So, okay, so you have not been in the actual White House. Uh, and have you been to Graceland? I have tried to go to Graceland. Um, I, you went, were, you were I went on a cross-country drive, but oh, actually okay. the power went out. Like just as we rolled into Memphis, the uh, the what? skies opened. All the, I mean, it was like really, I'm glad we didn't have a traffic accident because like, there were no traffic oh, lights wow. and everything. And Is that right? And what we also this? had our cat with us. And mm -hmm. <laughs> so so anyway, we ended up staying in the um, Heartbreak Hotel at Graceland because they had a generator, but we couldn't go in Graceland oh, because okay. it was shut down at that moment. So, when was, so this? I was defeated. This was uh, two and a half years ago. Oh, just summer. two and a half years yeah. ago. Yeah. So hopefully one day I'll get there. Was this in the research stage? This was prior to the research stage. I just wanted to go to Graceland. Oh, okay. I, you, you hadn't thought of this screenplay. You were probably still uh, making a, maybe a, a Hate Ship Love Ship was coming out around that time, I guess, right? You know, maybe it, it was actually, I remember it was the summer the summer after I made Return. Is when, okay. So I don't know when that was. Right, but I'm not, point again. is, power outage in Memphis. But but I would love to go there someday. And I um, I also, I don't know if you've seen those William Eggleston photographs of Graceland, but I, I, I really like his work. And mm -hmm. I, I think that those pictures are really cool. Mm-hmm. So it's it's opening Friday. Yes. Uh, well, it's probably in like a hundred cities or something like that. I'm going to guess it's how many cities do you know that you're opening in? Um, I haven't seen the list yet. I think it's. I heard it's three fifty. Uh -huh. I, I don't know. Three hundred fifty screens. It, well, the thing is, that's I, wonderful. I'm sorry, wow. I haven't seen the list, and I, I I'm Doesn't not matter. certain that they're all on Friday, but I think they are. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's called Elvis and Nixon, and of course, it's about their fate, fateful meeting, and it's a comedy. We're going to mm -hmm. say it's a comedy. It has a great supporting cast as well. Let's see. It has, I would say that the the third really important character is Alex Pettifer, who plays yes. Jerry Schilling, who right. um, has been a real friend to the project and to me personally. Um, it's almost a memoir, uh, like a, almost like a, his memoir in a way. It feels like you're 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 with his P in his POV for a great deal of it. Well, you know, he wrote a really young. beautiful memoir. He which, did, yeah, and I have to recommend it. It's called I "Me and a Guy it. Named Elvis." Okay, and, and which is int it's an interesting title because it's this is a guy. Well, that's yeah. how he. Yeah. That it's I mean, that's funny. who Elvis was to him, right? right he's right. like he yeah. is a person to whom Elvis right. was a real flesh and blood person, and not an image. Right. Which you know? we see in Michael Shannon's performance. That's Correct. what we see. We don't Correct. see any performance. We don't see the icon. We see the a guy named Elvis. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And and I imagine that'll be surprising to people because it's not how we think of Elvis. But but for me, it, I think his book is so lovely, and it has just this very intimate voice. And yet he also has an overview. Mm -hmm. Do you know a lot of times when people are writing about someone that they're close to, it's just like very, um, 
uh, promotional kind yeah. of, and and his voice is more intimate, and and it has a measure of distance and a measure of analysis of of the whole his whole life with Elvis, and it, I think it's a really beautiful work and and um you know there's so much work done on elvis there's mm-hmm. tons of historical stuff tons of fan stuff there's even tons of creative stuff right. you know like like alice walker has a beautiful elvis story i think the warhol elvises are profoundly meaningful mm-hmm. um uh, i really like that gillian welsh song elvis presley blues you know there's just he, there's a lot of elvis material right and for me, it was great to have access to Jerry and to let his book be like, this is going to be my Elvis as opposed to Understood. some other one. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, and also, we just want to mention Johnny is great. Right. Johnny, Johnny Knoxville's in it. Johnny plays and Sonny West. Terrific yeah. too. Yeah. And, then, and then Colin Hanks and Evan Peters right. play the, the kind of Nixon Cro- voice. But, but uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah was it- and Bud, Bud Crow actually came to our set once too, is which that was, true? it was, he's one it, of the few remaining, it was so uh, surreal. Players that's it was alive. so surreal. Yeah. Like I, I was on set, we were lighting and I, I, I looked out onto the, yeah. you know, back off the stage and, and I saw this guy there and I was like, I, I bet that's Bud Crow. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know, and so like Jerry's there, Alex is there dressed like Jerry, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, Bud's there and then Colin's there dressed like bud and i i you know i went up to him and i was just like hi i'm i'm liza johnson and he was i don't know what i expected but i was uh-huh. just like oh this is like a nixon administration person yeah, you know and, not too many left no and i mean he stage. like he yeah. he you know he did time for watergate like yeah, he's like yeah. a significant nixon person right. and and i don't know did I you think, ask him what he knew and when did he know no it? I didn't. <laughs> just thinking he, it might have been the right he was just like Liza, how did you get yeah. this idea? You know, and, right. and and I was just like, oh, you know, I didn't write it. Um, so he asked me who wrote it, and I I told him that Joey and Hannah Lissagall and and Carrie Elwes wrote it, and and he started doing scenes from The Princess Bride for me. Carrie Elwes, <laughs> yes, exactly. that's very surreal. <laughs> it was. It was one of the most surreal days of my life. So well, that's what making films like this, uh, I guess, hap- uh, affords you these experiences, right? And if you're open to them, it can be quite a ride. You know? Well, you know, I do think it's one of the most surreal. Yes, convergences of, of, of it's American true. These two history, worlds kind of yeah. collided in this in this this day, and and it's true. I think as a as a child of the seventies, definitely spoke to me. I've had more of actually of a, a kind of a ongoing interest on a certain like not obsessive level, but certainly on a deep level, a nuanced level with Nixon more than even Elvis, even though I read all these Elvis books and, you know, because the, these were icons of my time, you know? Right. Um, so, so to see this movie, it was, it was nice. It was a nice to see that there were p- those people that shared that with me in a way. And yet it was done in a very kind of um, almost like a loving way. I mean, you seem to really care about the characters in the, in the creation of the film, which is really nice. You know, you're not making fun of them. No, in other words, and, you're not. I mean, you know, think, so many think, have, and I don't think, I think that, people with the bad think that intention. about comedy or, yeah. or, right. I mean, I think in the classical sense, a satire should offer you some kind of way to think about yeah. power or to analyze right. power. And I think I, I hope that in a gentle way, this film does do that. But, but I don't think. I think when you think about comedy or satire, there's this idea that it's to mock people, and I don't. I actually no, don't think that's a, is... the only aspect of that tradition. Not at all. Well, you know. Congratulations on that. And uh, yes, it's snark free uh, film. <laughs> thank, you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Liza. Thank you so much. It was really nice. Interest. Sure, sure. On the coffee table is a dish with M&M's. Those are only for the president. M&M's are my favorite. Mine, too. There is also an unopened bottle of Dr. Pepper. You have a bottle opener? Please do not open it. Please do not drink from it because it's only for the president. What in the good God is going on? I don't know, sir. Give a little love. Make sure we get a picture with Mr. President and me. Go on, man, do it. You and me rose from nothing. But look where I am today. Look where you are. Give a little love. Ha! Go on, ha! Man, ha! Do it. That's how I learned to develop these knuckles of steel. Now slap them. Come on, harder. Harder. Give Let it out. Let it out. Those are the steel claws of a tiger, Mr. President.